Did you know or suspect your witness was lying? Of course not, Your Honor. Mrs. Stottlemyre, what did you do after overhearing the witness say he was lying? I told Paul here about it. And what did you do, Paul? I told two other jurors. Then we decided we'd better come up here and tell you. Thank you for your honesty. In light of these developments, ladies and gentlemen, I am declaring a mistrial. Brian! Bishop Bascom. Your Grace. Well, isn't this a coincidence? Before I began my hospital rounds today, I was praying, and suddenly the Lord put you in my mind. Hmm. Now here I am again, walking away. Well, Brian, the six months is up, isn't it? Your penitential retreat? Yeah. Well, have you thought about coming back to the church? Not so much. Brian, it could be, it could very well be that God is calling you back. Oh, wait, that's ridiculous. Of course you think it's ridiculous. You're the state. The state is a defendant judge. That would be a very clever tactic if we weren't one step ahead of you. We've already hired outside independent counsel. In fact, outside counsel came to us. Really? Who? I don't see anybody. Commonwealth has waived conflict. Will counsel please approach the bench? Your Honor, this is uncharged misconduct. It is not allowable under military law. Well, how do you know this witness is going to charge misconduct? Well, I'm serious. He knows because he was at the Battle of Kalu. On what grounds are you calling your witness? Colonel Hodge has made Colonel Childers' combat experience part of his defense. I'm going to allow the witness. Colonel Terry L. Childers, this court-martial finds as follows. On the charge of conduct unbecoming an officer, the court finds the defendant not guilty. On the charge of murder, the court finds the defendant not guilty. Go on and Lowry for this Hopkins thing. It's as wrong as it gets. Preaching to the choir, Frank. The guy goes out, gonna kill cops. Trust your pal, Woody. You go if not past the grand jury. That's really my hope. Other situations, nuts again. Yeah, huh? Making insane accusations. I glued up her mailbox, defaced her car. She filed complaints? She says I car bitch on the side of her car. Woody, did she talk to the cops in Manhattan? She says there's no point. Off you talking to her that one time, she says I've got the fix in. All I told her is what you told me. I know. You were getting help for yourself, apologize for the stupid threats. Now she calls with insane accusations. Woody, you can't be harassing. I wouldn't. Not that she doesn't deserve it. Don't misunderstand me. Prosecutorial misconduct is a problem. But to deny justice in order to save justice makes no sense. However, I am required to consider the totality of the facts supporting these allegations as well as the credibility of the parties involved. This is not the first time I've had Mr. Walsh before me. This year alone, I have seen a man I have always respected employ what I consider to be sharp and unethical practices. He has become increasingly less candid and honest. In his effort to do justice, he has perverted it. I therefore, sadly, have no choice but to find that Mr. Walsh did intend to cause a mistrial in an effort to obtain a new trial. The case against the defendant is dismissed with prejudice. May I be heard? I have ruled, Mr. Walsh. Your decision is unjust, unconscionable, and wholly unsupported in law or fact. You crossed the line a long time ago, Mr. Walsh. I ascribe your inappropriate response to the fact that ultimately you know this whole disaster is your fault. This court is adjourned.